Good morning, folks. Remember in October we described the fiery demise to come of the ESA GravSat. We're about 24 to 36 hours from re-entry. I've pulled a good satellite tracker and the appropriate track for you. Link is below in the About tab. Let's quickly look back at some of his best work while he was up there. Ayan, Super Typhoon. The number of official dead has risen and will continue to rise all day. We now know entire metro areas were leveled. We can now only wait for more news and pray that Vietnam's ready for yet another storm to hit its coastline as well. West of that, we have an interesting threat to the Arabian Sea and east-northeast Africa. First storm of the season threatening this area. I'm not sure anyone actually watches this show over there, but that's all right. Princeton University, press release about tiger stripes. Actually, that's their playful naming after their mascot applied to the rib, rock, and dirt lines under the ice that they say are a big factor in ice movement and climate change. If you want the actual paper, I've linked that below as well. Ice on Observing Campaign updated their light curve, showing strong brightening and now closely matching the patterns Bruce Gary is sharing with us as well. They're close to a final word on the sun-facing coma structure, but agree about major brightening. And just an FYI, the JPL orbital diagram for Comet Ison was updated last night with no perceptible changes to the trajectory. Interestingly, this comet diagram uses nearly 6,000 observations, which doesn't quite put it on par with Hale-Bopp, but Comet Ison is officially one of the most observed comets in history pre-naked eye visibility, and I imagine I'll be able to remove that qualifier before it's all said and done. A point of frustration for me, my favorite boy, subject of the widely watched video called Disturbance Under the Ocean, has been taken off the online monitoring system. Very frustrating. That video I just mentioned is in the About tab with the other background videos. Solar Wind finally showing a significant CME. Now we've seen some dense interplanetary shocks as of late, but it's been a long time since something besides a coronal hole ramped us to 500 kilometers per second. Still counts as just a moderate impact, but it's bigger than what we've had recently. Got some instability. The sensitive metrics suggest a magnetic storm could crop up at some point in the wake of the impact. High energy protons have been rising in the wake of yesterday's X flare. The lull in flaring afterwards onset quickly but may be ending now. Corona hole power stronger than it has been in the earth facing position. And since the quakes quieted with the magnetic tantrum up here we have our first opening of the fields. Starting with the American west coast where two above average rumbles hit about an hour apart. We also had a significant number of alleged quarry blasts including a previous one that was taken off the page before the others appeared. Also got global uptick signals everywhere, especially way to the south. Quick note on Soho Lasco C3 as Saturn hides behind this thing here. FYI, that is the satellite arm holding the opaque disk blocking solar glare. In order to see stars, planets, comets, and CME plasma, you need a super sensitive camera, but such a device would be ruined by sun glare, so es bueno. Earth-facing sunspot group, the big one, still hanging on to that backside delta spot. It is definitively alive and could pop more today. The limb group appears to have mixing magnetics, but has not produced yet. We'll keep an eye. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.